This Sunday morning, August 11th, 2019, clashes broke out among Muslim protesters and Israeli police on Temple Mount, the compound of Masjid Al-Aqsa. This happened in relation to the confluence of holy days among Muslims and Jews, Eid al-Adha for Muslims, commemorating the end of the annual Hajj pilgrimage, and Tisha B'Av, B'Av, <coughs> the Jewish fast day when Jews mourn the destruction of the temple, one of which stood on the current site of Masjid al-Aqsa. They mourn this and other tragic events in Jewish history. At least 61 Muslim worshipers were injured and at least four police officers wounded at the time of the update. I'm upset by this development for many reasons. Leaders in all areas had more than sufficient advance warning of the confluence of these holy days. Care and preparation was not fitting to meet a day so obviously rife with the potential for conflict. There should have been close collaboration among leaders from all communities and among all sectors of social leadership, including religious leaders, political leaders, and leaders of security forces. The goal should have been for worshipers of every community to be able to fulfill their sacred devotions in an environment of serenity and order. That's the goal. Plans should have been to get us as close to that as is possible. It's my view that the central most figures responsible to guide and plan for uh, in anticipation of occasions such as this are the spiritual and religious leaders. Leaders of all related religions should have been the preeminent peace-minded force in discussions and political and security leaders should then work closely and intimately with that group. There is no excuse for any religious leader to perpetrate any spirit of hostility, which is exactly what in fact happened. This is a disgrace. It's a black mark on religion, religious life and religious practice. Political leaders should properly have had, should properly have the opportunity to work in close consultation and be guided by religious leaders who could explain to them the subtle sensitivities of their respective communities. But in the absence of spiritual leaders who are harmonized across the boundaries of traditions, political and security leaders are left with no help or insight, no one to turn to. This is what's angering. Enlightened and peace-oriented spiritual leaders should be in constant collaboration to forge designs for harmonious co-living and mutual support for each other's believers. These permanently engaged multi-religious leadership groups would naturally be all over a holy day like this. Preparations would be as normal and as plain and obvious as putting a banister on a steep staircase. The need is obvious, but the problem is that people who should lead in the ideal and the natural common sense for peace are too busy perpetrating sectarianism and narrow parochial perversions of what should rather be gleaming and elegant beauty of religious and spiritual life. A multi-religious leadership group has all the resources necessary to envision, to envision how best to help religious believers have a good experience when holy days happen to hit at the same time in such a delicate place. If such groups existed, politicians would not avoid involving and engaging spiritual leaders in social and uh, civic affairs. I'm not offering facile and naive recommendations in response to this clash. Of course, this rare confluence of holy days, Tisha B'Av and Eid al had seem almost custom built to cause an eruption and clash in such an unusual place as Temple Mount and uh, Ma Masjid al-Aqsa. The occasion unfolds in possibly the single most complex and intractable historical reality in our world today, ultimately the roots of these long-standing problems will need to be addressed. But this does not mean that creative engagement and constructive sol uh, solution seeking is not possible for discrete occasions such as today. If conscientious experts in the mission of religious and spiritual leadership dedicated themselves in a focused 
and sustained ways to analyze systematically and recommend long-term solutions to the challenges unique to the Holy Land, especially Jerusalem, they naturally would anticipate calendar realities such as today and could prayerfully and practically provide intuitive and insightful preparations and plans with elegant contingencies in place. Then, not only could they guide and offer recommendations to political and security leaders, but also for proper messaging among their lower local imams, rabbis, and other religious leaders in their respective traditions. For those not uh, familiar with the subtleties and complex labyrinth of sensitivities surrounding what the Jews call Temple Mount and Muslims and call Masjid al-Aqsa, a huge issue has to do with the right of non-Muslims to visit this sacred area of the Masjid. Sadly, sensitivity, sensitivity is wildly intensified if the visiting group or individuals in question are Jews. This traces back to uh, Israel-Palestinian issues, so-called occupation issues, and so forth. It is strongly possible that the heightened sensitivity to Jews is more politically driven than religious and pertains in the minds of many to what they call the occupation of Palestine. This is this, is, this precise area where Masjid al-Aqsa sits just atop the western wall, the sacred prayer space of Jews, is the white-hot center of this political and historical clash. It is actually a testament to good that this fragile, that fragile peace obtains in this vicinity the vast percentage of time. There need never be the kind of clash that we saw this morning. Genuine, genuine, uh, Spiritual and religious people and leaders should be the ones most naturally in tune with the religious and spiritual needs of our brothers and sisters from traditions different from our own. Theoretically, uh, faithful and practical Muslims should be way ahead in her ability to understand Jewish life and needs, ahead of even the best person who has no religious religion in their lives. It should not be even a tiny bit difficult for any religious person to understand that religious uh, belie the believers in other traditions are sensitive about their places of worship. How hard is that to, to, to stretch, to figure out, to guess? The Jewish holy day, Tisha B'Av, which is the time when Jews mourn the destruction of the temple, including the one that stood on Temple Mount. Should it really be that difficult to guess what goes on in the heart of a believer at such a day? A Muslim shouldn't have a hard time figuring that out. A Hindu shouldn't have a hard time figuring it, that out. I know how I'd feel on such a day if there, was, if there was a holy day like that in my religion. Isn't it common sense that Jews would like to visit that area? Why can't that be worked out? Why don't both religious leaders and political leaders from both communities work together and figure out the best way to tend to the needs and sensitivities to the greatest number of people? A small number of Jews visited for a short time. They were met with danger. People began to throw chairs and other objects at them, and police had to step in to protect them. So these types of days, when the confluence of holy days that involve the sacred spaces of different communities, they provide an opportunity for religions to look their very best, in fact. How wonderful Muslim worshipers would have looked if they had offered a kind welcome to Jewish visitors trying to make a devotional offering on a holy day. Please come, but come quickly, come quietly. We'll be sure that your time is, uh, is, pr is protected and safe. And please come only just for a few minutes. We have a very big holy day of our own we're celebrating. If everyone was looking for a way and a, pl a plan could have been devised, leaders could then guide their respective constituents Jewish visitors could be educated about how best to behave and understand and honor those who welcomed them and honor the, how the space is being used now. Muslims could learn about the heart of a Jew as she ponders her own history and why such a day is commem of commemoration is needed in her life. Police could learn about more uh, both communities. The ideal of generosity and, and hospitality is paramount in Muslim life and culture. It's exceptional. 
there's there's much in the teaching about genteel embrace and the ideals of dialogue and conversation with non-Muslim believers. How beautiful would it be if we can see the day when worshipers of all religions look upon one, uh, one another as fellow travelers and are naturally, if not especially sensitive to the religious needs and experiences of believers from other traditions. If I learned that there was a Muslim holy day uh, and that there was no place for Muslims around to offer their prayers and devotions, I would hope that my simple and normal reaction would be to open up my church or my house or my temple. Doesn't this seem like what one would normally do or would that would be normal religious behavior or a religious thing to do? My hope would be that as a Jew or a Hindu or a Christian, I'd be knocking people over trying to get people to come pray in my church or my house or my temple. What possible other way is there to practice my religion? Then when the worshipers leaving my mosque or my temple, wouldn't they say thanks? Wouldn't they be grateful? Wouldn't this be a time of intimacy, of, of harmony? Please be sure to come pray with us if you ever need, they might say as, you le as they left. I'm not being simplistic in this recommendation and this call for religious leaders to teach in this way. The call is nothing else, nothing more than to put spirituality and religious ideals first in my teachings and, what I and how I expect my fellow adherents to behave when they encounter people just like themselves in a different religious tradition. All leaders in Israel and Jerusalem should have been working together for months in anticipation of these two particular holy days of today. They should have had as their goal for as many people as possible to be offer, able to offer their sacred devotions in the optimum and in a serene and welcoming environment. Once this is the goal, led primarily by a consortium of enlightened religious leaders from multiple traditions, then the next step is for politicians, security forces, and, and others to try to see what, to meet the practical challenges and difficulties of trying to get as close to that outcome as possible. Get as close as we can, try our best, apologize where we fall short, and try to do better next time. Now there was trouble this morning. I pray that this will pass quickly, that it won't take root, and no, there, nothing will escalate from this. I pray for any who were hurt and injured, and I pray that from now we can work more conscientiously and sincerely and, and in, a, in a mind and attitude of minimal common sense and decency, care and generosity and hospitality toward all, even those who are strongly and completely different from me. This, this is not a complicated matter. Uh, may there be peace in uh, Jerusalem and among uh, my brothers and sisters among Muslims and Jews and, and the world over. Thank you for listening.